All right. Hey, Mike Holmes here. Welcome aboard. Uh, we're here today to talk about how to run a vacation Bible school that reaches young moms and dads. And I want to spend some time just with you, not in a real f fancy technical sense, but just kind of talking uh, uh, between us here and sharing with you some of the things that we have done at our church to help us when Vacation Bible School was over, we had our goal achieved, and our goal was to reach some moms and dads and have them attend the service and the, the following Sunday, and then, of course, sign up and have their kids involved for the summer, and then, of course, you know, keep them involved forever and ever and ever, uh, as we all would like to have. So one of the things that we learned with Vacation Bible School, and, and these have been done for 100 years, is that they're usually kind of aimed as a like a five-day event and they are just put out there to uh you know have something special for the kids and there's usually some crafts and some fun and some refreshments and and some teachers uh, many times they're during the day uh, sometimes now we run them in the evening um, but they're usually in the two to two and a half hour range something along that line and they are a good uh, fun time for the kids and it is something for the kids to do during the summer and there's a lot of reasons people do uh, different programs, and uh, VBS is one of those that's kind of very traditional. It's been done for a long time, and we do it because we always did it. And way back there, someone might have thought of, let's uh, do something for the kids during the summer. That's a legitimate thing, and uh, I, I think it's fun for kids to have fun. I mean, I think that's an important thing. Um, that's a good deal. Uh, many people run a vacation Bible school to train some of their new workers, and that's sort of a side thing you can do. In other words, you can get some of your teenagers and newer people to kind of cut their teeth on teaching, and that is a, a, a very good, legitimate thing, and that can be uh, done as well. So for kids to have fun and for new people to be trained is great. Um, for just getting the gospel out into the community, another great idea because usually a VBS kids bring their friends and then they bring their friends and you get new new faces and you're able to talk to uh, you know younger children and, and even uh, younger teens if they're coming and uh, uh, present the gospel to them and help them understand uh, the ways of the Lord. So there are, those are some really good things. One of the things though that we did for our goal for Vacation Bible School, was to make sure that what we were doing was we were retaining families. And uh, so we're since we're covering that in this particular topic, that's going to be my focus. Um, kids have fun at our Bible school. We present the gospel at our Bible school. We train new people at our vacation Bible school. But the focus of this training here is how to get moms and dads to come back. Now, many times you'll run a program or you'll have Easter, you'll have a big event or something, and a family will come and they'll kind of stick, and that's a wonderful thing, and everybody's praising the Lord for that. And sometimes it seems to happen, though, kind of by accident. And I know there are no accidents with the Lord, um, but it's, it's not necessarily part of the aim. Well, we're taking a, just a very kind of a pragmatic approach on this in the right way, and that is we're looking for a specific outcome we want to do those things, train our new people and have fun with the kids and, and uh, you know, sp spend time, you know, influencing, uh, you know, the, the children of the community. We want to do that. But we also want to have an outcome, a desired outcome that helps us in many ways because we are we feel we are called to take the gospel to our Jerusalem area. Uh, out of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, that idea of you shall receive power and go out, you know. We want to take it, and we feel that's a command, and so we feel that we're really obeying by reaching moms and dads of our community. And so that outcome is just simply being obedient to the Great Commission and reaching out to moms and dads, bringing them in through a VBS. And we found that the best way to get moms and dads to stick around and end up with entire families is to aim for that. In other words, not just kind of get lucky at the end and just kind of, you know, hopefully they'll come and come back, but to really take aim at it. And that's what you're going to see as we go through all these different points. And I have quite a few different points that we're going to be covering. 
that will help you. So there's a lot of ideas here, and uh, you can write these down, and you can play this back over and over and over and get some of these ideas however you want. And some of them will work for you. Some of them won't. Um, I found that the ones that don't work are the ones that you don't do. Uh, in other words, please try some of these things. You know, almost all of these things will fit in any given VBS if the schedule allows and uh, that type of thing. So um, what we really have focused on here is the idea is that we're going to aim at reaching new, and this would be new, unchurched, unchurched moms and dads. And that is the idea that we taught in our recent webinar, is that you aim for a demographic. And you, you focus on a demographic. And while we are uh, commanded to go into all the world, uh, the fact is that if we take time and, and, and we'll never reach all the world in the sense that they're all going to be at church on Sunday. Uh, you know what I mean by that? They wouldn't all fit. Um, but <clears throat> we want to reach all the world, but we have found if we take time to focus programmatically on particular things, and we all know what that means. I mean, your church is already focused in many ways. You're focused on a geographic. Uh, you're in your little community, your big community, your subdivision, wherever. That's your place, and you kind of focus, you know, geographically on that. So there's nothing wrong with having to focus on something, and we want you to focus at least during the summer programmatically on the moms and dads of elementary-aged children. Let me repeat that. We want you to focus on the moms and dads of elementary age children. So these are going to be moms and dads that are, you know, somewhere from the 30 to 45 range in their age approximately. Um, a little bit younger, a little older, kind of depends on when they got started, if they started early or late. We know how that works. Um, but we're going to focus on those particular people, and that's going to be the main programmatic focus for this particular thing. Now, our church reaches everybody, and you will get senior citizens, and you will get everybody. And by the way, you'll find that when you start to reach a lot of children, that older people are attracted to that, and they love it that you have a youthful church and that you're reaching you know, young families, and so you will pick up a, a lot of people uh, that will come without any children, but they appreciate, uh, appreciate what you're doing. So the idea is here that we are going to aim at a specific demographic. The other principle that we taught in the webinar is that we need to aim at, there's a principle, what we call the second day, and that is when someone comes to visit a second time, they are much more likely to get involved and to stay and for you to be able to disciple them, lead them to the Lord, and, you know, help them to grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord after they've been there twice rather than they've been there once. Now, you have to have the first time visit, and that's why we get kids in for VBS. But we are really aiming at, and here's kind of the programmatic goal, we want you to aim your vacation Bible school. In other words, the, the success and the high five and the yes, it all came together. That is all going to be based on how many families or moms and dads came to Sunday morning church the Sunday after VBS. Now, you could add on to that goal, and if they came the third Sunday, the fourth Sunday, and yes, you'll be doing high fives for those. Um, we love to celebrate a lot of kids. It's fun to reach a lot of children. It's fun to have a big crowd. We all know that, uh, especially with children. It's good to see them having a good time. But we want them to come back with their moms and dads, and we want them to be there the following Sunday because that is visit number two. That is the second day, and that is where the relationship starts to build. And remember that we, we, we bring people in through attractional type of things. In other words, they're invited to a revival meeting. They're invited to a creation seminar. They're invited to church by a friend or a relative. We, we invite people to church, and that's why they come the first time. There's some type of event or an invitation. But we keep them primarily through relationships. Let me say that again. We keep them primarily through relationships. So what you're going to see here as we go through some of this is very strong in the relationship building because we're focusing on the second day. Now, I could spend a whole hour talking to you about how to promote Vacation Bible School to get them in the first time. 
And we have some things on the Reach Keep uh, YouTube channel about how to get people to attend a church, how to get them to come the very first time. That's a very important topic as well. Uh, but we're going to assume that you're going to advertise a little bit and you may put some ads on Facebook about your VBS and you're going to hand out some flyers and, and you're going to tell the kids, bring your friends and you're going to promote this well, get in your calendars way ahead of time. There's many, many things that have to do and we're assuming that you're doing that. Now that you're doing that, we're going to focus on visit number two, and that is getting the family to return the following Sunday. And if you have a good group of folks coming, that's where we want you to get excited. Now, you'll, you'll be excited when you do uh, your VBS and you finish up with a lot of kids and the closing program and a lot of fun stuff like that. It is, you'll, you'll have a great time, and there'll be some high fives, and you'll be, yeah, that was awesome. Okay, but what we're really wanting you to focus on and what we have done and what has been the proven track record for us is to focus on the people the the number of people that will be returning and I'm not going to go into the third visit or the fourth visit or you know your discipleship program that should be kicking in hopefully you have some of that stuff in place and if you don't Maybe you can contact us and we can coach you through and, and give you, uh, you know, some of the tips on how to disciple people and to mature them, you know, further, uh, further down the road. But we're just talking about getting them here for visit number two and coming as a family, not just the children coming back on Sunday, okay? And inevitably, you'll have some of those where the parents didn't make it, but we really want moms, dads, and children to walk in the door on Sunday, the following after VBS, and that is the goal. Um, how many you have, I don't know. I hope that you can send me an email or a text and let me know uh, that you had a great turnout for that, and that is exciting. And then I hope that your program kind of kicks into gear. In other words, you now you're going to get them here for the third Sunday, and you're going to get them into your Bible studies and midweek things and, you know, what whatever your system is from there. And again, that's beyond the scope of what we're covering. So um, I'm going to go through some notes here that I have and uh, just kind of touch on it. We're going to talk about uh, kind of some very big things. Some, uh, I'll, I'll give you the topics. We're going to talk about kind of the big picture program. We're going to talk about sign-in and the idea of, of gathering the data and how we do that. We're going to be covering um, a kind of a daily thing. In other words, what it looks like daily uh, that you can do. We're going to be talking about sort of a bigger picture of weekly and a, the, kind of a program, uh, the, the big picture of the entire week. And then we're going to talk about some printed materials uh, that will help you and some of the support. And all through the whole thing, you're going to see how these are all intertwined. And so they'll prob I'll probably get convoluted uh, as I go through this, and I'll probably get overly excited uh, because there is nothing quite like this. I have been doing vacation Bible schools uh, since the early 80s. Uh, every summer, we I worked for an organization. Uh, we did probably 250 VBSs every summer, uh, you know, around the nation. Uh, we've been in nearly every state in the country. Uh, our organization, Baptist Youth Mission, most of the provinces in Canada, we've done vacation Bible schools in. So we have been around and have done zillions of VBSs. And uh, so this is some stuff. These are some things that we have learned as we have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of vacation Bible schools. Uh, and so this is where some of this information comes from. So let's just jump right into the uh, uh, the program stuff. Uh, as I mentioned, Sunday, the Sunday after is the goal. In other words, they would come, uh, adults would come Sunday after church. That would be the goal. And also, th there would be the children would come to the Sunday school program or your junior church program. That would be part of the goal. So what that means is that you're going to have teachers that are going to be expecting, if they had six in their class, they're going to be expecting maybe 10 or 12. In other words, you let them know. And those teachers, hopefully, will have been working the VBS and inviting kids to their class and, and some of that. We uh, since Sunday is the goal after after uh, the VBS. One of the things we try to do in the make sure in the literature and see I'm ahead already on myself on literature. But you publish your Sunday morning service times uh, on your flyer so people do know when to come to the Sunday service. And then when you are meeting with them afterwards and talking to them in the parking lot, you're letting them know 
what you'll be teaching on that following Sunday. And we recommend, and again, this is the kind of the big picture type of thing, we believe that every Sunday you need to solve a problem. And if you're going to reach young families, they're coming to you with problems. And every Sunday you need to solve one of those things. And there's a, a variety of ways to do that, and we have a lot of training on that topic as well. But we believe that the best thing that you can do is after your VBS is to have a short series or at least one message on like how to raise, you know, godly kids in an ungodly world or, you know, the Ten Commandments for raising children in, in America or, uh, you know, how growing up God's way. I mean, there's a lot of different titles you can you can go with there, but something that you could then invite parents to come. In other words, they would come because they know that topic is something they're interested in. Now, let me say something about to my expository preaching friends and all of you that, that uh, uh, you know, kind of have this line, you know, all the way through, boom, 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 boom. That, nothing wrong with that. I think that's an excellent way to preach and exposit the scriptures. But there is also a time to do some type of topical message and to help people who are actually in need. And these people who we are getting to come back on this Sunday are not your average church crowd. In other words, you might be bringing in quite a few families that don't know the Lord in any way of salvation. They have no religious background, but they are looking for something for their kids and stability for their family. They don't know anything about doctrine. They're not coming for your doctrine. They're coming because someone built a relationship with them and invited them to come. So this would be the time to have kind of a special message and, and kind of break out of your, your system. Or if it fits in your system where you're at, do something very special and talk about raising children and discipline and things of, of that nature, that is going to help you bring those families in. Now, most of us church people, myself included, I go to church on Sunday. I don't care what the pastor is going to be preaching on. I go because I'm obedient. I go because I don't want to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. I go because it's a habit. And we all want that. But that's a, that's a view of a mature person. An immature person, they're going to go because of there's a topic. In other words, they're going to turn on the television because they're going to watch a particular topic, or they're going to go to a place because there's a, a menu item they like. They're going to go to a place because they're looking for a solution. People go to those things for those particular reasons, and they are, if the, the better off, you will be better off, is what I'm trying to say, you'll be better off if you have a good topic and you promote that topic. Now, there's several ways to do that, and this is, again, the goal. And uh, what works very nice for us is a large whiteboard, and you put it when people are walking into your, for your Sunday morning or walking into your, for your closing program or during VBS time when the parents are dropping them all off, and it just says, next Sunday, special, special message, how to deal, uh, you know, how to deal with uh, a, an angry child. I mean, that would be a great topic. You know, how to deal uh, with, you know, raising stepkids in this day and age. I, because probably 75% of your population that you will be bringing in to your VBS, probably even more than that, that will attend VBS, will be in a step situation. And so raising children, raising stepkids in this modern world. You know, you put that on a sign and they see that when they walk in. So great way to do that. So the, the big picture here is sun, the Sunday after is the goal, okay? We're going to get them, uh, the, the kids, Sunday school is the goal. We're going to get them there. The, a closing program is a goal. And this is a very important thing, is that you can try to work into your vacation Bible school. Most people do one, two, three, four, five, and those five days are over and they all go home. A great thing to have is a closing program in the evening after work hours, okay, so if you did VBS on a Friday during the morning, you would do it again at night, and if from, you know, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, something like that, and have a one-hour program where kids get an award, of some sort, you know, they get some Bibles, they get like a, a faithful attendance award, and you can do little ribbons, you can do little badges, you can do all sorts of things. You can do certificates for perfect attendance where you just give them a nice looking certificate. But you're going to have a closing program of some sort, and at the end of that closing program, you're going to have like a reception with some 
uh, food, and you're going to invite people to stay for the reception, okay, and the kids are going to play some games, and what we do is set up some little carnival games and have our workers set up some little uh, little tiny games and some fun stuff where they throw the ball through the hoop and then they get a piece of candy. Uh, you know, there's just a bunch of simple things to do that, and I can help you with some of that uh, at another time if you'd like to uh, contact me. Um, but this is the idea of having a closing program. So Sunday is the goal. Closing program is the goal. Parents coming in during the week and watching their children is the goal. So during the week and when the Bible school is getting ready to be over, and what you will find is that parents always drop their kids off late or just barely on time. And then the parents run and do some errands, run town or whatever, and then they come back to pick up their kids, but they usually come 10, 15 minutes early. So what we do is we go out into that parking lot and we invite them to come in. And we have some of our best relationship people. They walk out and say, hey, we got some nice cookies. we got a beautiful uh, place here inside. We'd like you to come on in, grab a cookie. And by the way, you can watch your kids. They're playing a couple games at the end, and you're going to love what your kids are doing. Parents love to watch your children having fun. And so one of the goals is to get the person out of the car in the parking lot and bring them into the building. You need to really work that scenario. And like I say, your best relationship people have some fresh uh, cookies made. We do fresh cookies every time. We've had fresh cut flowers. We've had these little tables set up. I mean, we've had just a really nice time. And our relationship people invite them in, and then they go, hey, let's go watch now. It's about time. They're going to be playing that game. And they go and watch their kids for uh, the last few minutes, and then they do get to take their kids home. But they're having a wonderful time with children in your building, and that's a, a great way. That's part of the whole aim thing we're talking about. And one more big picture kind of thing, uh, you know, besides the, the, the goal of Sunday and the closing program and the parents watching, is to get them to sign up for a continuing thing, whatever it happens to be. Now, we're going to talk about day camps, what we call outreach day camps, which is a great way to get uh, kids and r win families. We're going to talk about that in another session. But you can get parents to sign their kids up for that. Or if you're doing a VBS towards the end of the year, like in August, what you need to do is have a, a table and some nice uh, sign-up sheets and some of that, and you need to have a, you know, enrolling now for fall Sunday school. And parents enroll their kids to go to the Sunday school program this fall. And a lot of, a lot of you are going like, what do you mean enroll? We just invite them. We bring them in, whatever. Now, if you enroll them, then you get their data, you get their phone numbers, you get an expectation that their kids are going to be there, and then you follow up, let your Sunday school directors and, and people follow up. It's like, hey, here's five kids that enrolled to be in your class. Why don't you call them all, go visit them this week, and we're going to you know, start our fall Sunday school on September 1st or where, whenever it happens to be. So those are the big picture programmatic goals. Uh, number two here is a sign-in, the sign-in stuff. And uh, we want to make sure we capture all the data we possibly can when people are signing up. And so when they com come in, we have a sign-up card that the parents put their info in, and we do have, like, emergency contact info on there, very important thing, and that would be parent's cell phone. Now, when you get the parent's cell phone, you, we're going to go a long ways with this because there's a lot of things that you can, you can do with that, but you're going to get that information. You're going to get their address so that you can go visit them. You're going to get uh, their brothers and sisters and how they're interrelated with the other people. Uh, that is always a, an important thing. So make sure you get their cell phone names and make sure cell phone numbers uh, and make sure you get their email. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do with cell phone numbers and or email, and they are just real simple type of things, and you need somebody uh, to do this. And I, I know you're like, ah, oh, there's too many people. I'm, I'm getting on overload. This is where you find a person that can't teach, you know, or is not able to, you know, work with the kids, but they have a little bit of administrative skills. And so once the VBS starts or you've signed up kids for the week before you get the, their emails, and or their cell phone numbers. And let me give you a couple of things that you can do with that. So once a person signs up, you send them a thank you. And the thank you just simply says, we really appreciate you sending your kid to, you know, First Baptist Church or wherever the name of your place is. We want to thank you for trusting us with your kids. Your kids are going to have a great time, and we are really, really excited about it. Here is a link to our website to learn more about our church. Boom, and you're done. 
Very simple. They're going to read it because it's short and simple. If you did that the week before or, or the night before VBS, the next one that you would want to send is, Dear Mom and Dad, thank you so much for enrolling your kid in our Vacation Bible School. Our starting time is this. Our ending time is that. And all you need to do is just kind of, you know, you can pick up kids out front or on the west parking lot or, you know, a couple of, of uh, those kind of directions. So sort of give them the time schedule, okay? Um, once you've done a few of these, you're going to be able to maybe add another one later in the week and say, dear moms and dad, the kids are having so much fun. It has been awesome. And have a few pictures included on there. And don't do close-ups of children. Uh, parents don't like that uh, in this day and age. But have some pictures of the kids playing in the park or, you know, from far away and some of that. And uh, some of the fun times that they've had. Include a couple pictures in there. Then you can even send one more later in the week that's, that, you know, has a link to something that would be appropriate, uh, you know, that is coming up, like maybe one of your programs or something like that. You see you know, what we're doing here is we're creating a, rela a relationship with a mom and dad, and we're creating that relationship with something that is near and dear to them, and that is this little baby right here, their telephone, okay? Uh, they are really, really attached to smartphones in this day and age. Um, some 90% of all Americans have a smartphone, uh, as far as of, of age people anyway, and 98% uh, of all people have a cell phone now. Okay, so they're very attached to it. Smartphones are even, like say, very high percentage. So you can send them links, you can send them all sorts of, of different things. So make sure you are capturing the right data. And of course, the addresses, the physical address of where they live will be very important for you for follow-up purposes for your teachers. So you want your teachers then to be going out. And again, this is part of your schedule. So you got a VBS all week long, okay, a closing program on Thursday or Friday. And on Saturday, you want to have some people that are still alive and not worn out to go make some visits. And now you have their address and they can, the fifth grade teacher can go out and visit anyone who was a fifth grader or whatever your breakdown is. So you see what we're doing here with the address. We're going out there building those relationships. We're getting to know those kids and we're inviting them to come back the next Sunday because that is the big day uh, that we are all excited about. So we have the program, we have the sign-in. Let me go through kind of a little daily schedule for you, okay, a couple uh, different things here. Uh, if you are picking up kids in a bus or a van, make sure that your workers are extremely polite. Make sure that they're wearing a shirt or something that has a logo, or make sure they have some type of identification. Uh, the children in this day and age uh, coming out of a, uh, a public school environment, uh, everybody is badged, everybody is, you know, background checked, all that. So make sure that you are up to speed uh, on some of that if you're picking them up. And also, it is really handy if your bus workers or people that are going out to pick them up, if they have church brochures. In other words, they have something that has church literature on it, and they can hand it to the parent if the parent doesn't know. Many times a mom will sign the kids up, okay, but she's asleep and dad's only one awake right now or stepdad or whatever. He doesn't know, and you're there to pick up the kids. And, oh, by the way, here's, you know, thanks for sending them. We'll be back at noon or whatever, but here's a brochure that tells all about the church. That will go a long way when you hand out printed printed literature okay also on the daily make sure that they are checking in that all your kids are getting uh, checked in and that you have friendly people at the check-in area and if a mom is coming up and checking her little ones in which is often the case for you know the preschool kindergarten first grade age right in there that there is someone that can maybe take that mom aside and, and help them check in and sit down over at the side and kind of go through and explain things. Many times for a younger kid, they are not familiar with the building, they're not familiar with the process, and they come with a friend and they want to stick with a friend. And you might need somebody to help take the two of them to the class or over to the main rally time or whatever is going on. But you need some extra people there. So when a mom comes in with three or four kids, that someone just immediately goes to that mom and says, oh, can I help you get your kids checked in? And they don't necessarily have to wait in a big, long line and deal with a grumpy person uh, at the end. So make sure that 
you have uh, some friendly uh, some friendly folks doing the check-in and that you meet those parents, okay? Uh, also, many times parents will ask if they're able to sit and stay and watch. And yes, we do allow that. Now, you might be worried about a background check scenario. We do not uh, do any background checks on anyone until they visit like the third time and they are like now becoming a helper or a, you know something along that line. Parents are always allowed to visit without a background check because they are under supervision. In other words, they are not part of the program. They're sitting in a chair in the back and they can watch. And so you'll have some parents many times that want to just stay with their kids and sit in the back and kind of see what their kids are going through. And that can be a little intimidating for a teacher sometimes so make sure your teachers are aware that we are parent friendly and if a parent wants to sit in we're going to let them do that because the goal is to get the moms and dads back the following Sunday so if the teachers know the big picture they're not going to push back on someone sitting in their classroom and of course you should have two people in every classroom and windows on your doors and you know leave the doors open if they're uh, uh, you know solid doors so that you're you know security conscious and have someone kind of roaming around there and if there are visitors especially male visitors sitting in a room with a, a woman classroom uh, a woman teaching uh, make sure that your security person kind of walks through and kind of checks that out so you know get your uh, get your ushers get your deacons get everybody involved and uh, that that'd be that'd be a great thing so uh, make sure that you allow parents to visit also and I mentioned this earlier but is bring in the parking lot crowd and you need to really do that. We have people that are at the front of our building, and when a car pulls up at, like, say, VBS is over at noon, cars will start pulling in about 20 till. And as soon as a car pulls out, boom, we got people walking out that parking lot. That is their job. In other words, they're not teaching a class. They're not running a game. They're not doing refreshments. They might have done something earlier in the day, but now they're a parking lot person, and they walk out, and they go, oh, good to have you here. Who's, who's your kid? You know, and, and they talk with them a little bit, and then they invite them in. Uh, for the things we talked about, the, the cookies and the flowers and uh, things of that nature. So, all right, uh, moving along here. We're moving along here. This is, that was sort of our daily schedule, some of the things I wanted to make sure we got there. I want to talk about sort of this, uh, uh, the, the weekly schedule. And uh, this is the idea that uh, the Sunday before your church service uh, needs to be very much promoting the VBS and recruiting extra workers if you're going to need people like security or walk around or people to count pennies if you take a penny offering, all of that, you're going to need um, to recruit some people. So on that Sunday before the VBS, make it a big day. In fact, we like to decorate um, for our vacation Bible schools, and we'll put street streamers up and we've done a jungle theme and you know we've done all sorts of of different things and if you're going to be teaching your children in the main auditorium let me say something that will stimulate some excitement in your church and probably will help your church not to be classified as boring because sometimes people do say that and that is when people walk in on vbs sunday morning it's like what is going on in here? Okay. And you've got, you know, house plants there and junk, dressed up as a jungle, all these sorts of different things going on. And we get stuffed animals from the kids and put them around and people come in and the, the pastor preaches right there with all that kind of stuff and gives an invitation. You need to be involved and serve the Lord. You can work at VBS. And that's what all this stuff is for. And yeah, this, I know this is strange and this is different, but children are worth it. And we're going to reach our community and you can have a great, a great thing by setting up and doing decoration a lot of decoration ahead of time and you can recruit people that kind of come in early and do that on friday saturday sunday get ready or friday saturday so it's ready on sunday uh, for your your decoration for your vacation bible school and it will seem a little awkward but i'll tell you what it will turn the spirit and make the spirit you can you can you need to turn the spirit and make it the spirit of evangelism and excitement and no spot is so dear to my childhood is a little brown church in the veil how do we make church a dear place for our children by running programs like we're running this week and that's why we got these things set up and we're so excited so you be praying for our vbs and you be uh, praying for this in fact i always tell the the parents i said uh, when we're on sunday morning if i am speaking before the sunday morning getting ready to run the program uh, on monday tuesday wednesday i said you know about 11:30 every morning 
uh, that's about the time we're going to be giving the gospel, and I'm going to do an illustration, and I'm going to do a magic trick, and I'm going to do a, you know, something that, so the kids would understand the gospel clear. And I want you to pray that children would understand and believe the gospel. Will you do that? Will you do that? Thank you. Yes, we need to do that. So you get people excited about this, what's going on the entire week. And many people, of course, what can I do to help? It's like, well, bring cookies and bring your neighbors, and here's some flyers. Go hand those out. Uh, so the, the, the big thing is getting that week kind of fired up and, and taking off with that particular week. Now, during the week, you will have uh, several different things going on, you know, your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, however your program is, and make sure that you're running things excellent. Make sure that you're cleaning things up ahead of time and making sure everything's straight and ready to go. We like to take kids out and do some type of visiting sometimes on Monday and Tuesday, even sometimes Sunday afternoon, where we will just have some of the local children and maybe some of the you know the staff kids or whatever they'll meet uh, with me the pastor and I'll say hey let's go over to this neighborhood or this trailer park and hand out some flyers and invite some boys and girls to vacation Bible school could you come at three o'clock this afternoon and help me for an hour to do that oh yeah that would be great and then we go out with a church van and we hand out flyers and a great thing um, to, to really sort of make it different and inviting people is I give balloons to all the kids. So every kid has a has a balloon, just a big blow-up balloon, and they're running around with, with balloons. And he, no, no, no mugger, you know, bad people ever run around with balloons, you know. So it kind of disarms everybody. And you're going to take the, and you're going to go up to the door. And when we go visiting, we take three or four or five people to the door, and we go to where, the you know, there's swing sets and big wheels and kids' stuff and knock on the door, say, hey, we noticed the stuff here, and we're having vacation Bible school this week, and we just wanted you to have a flyer it tells you know everything about it and we can come pick your kid up if you're doing that or or it starts at seven o'clock at night over at the church and it only goes till 8 30 or it starts at nine and goes till noon you know why but you just tell people and, and then the kids one of the kids if there's other children they give the balloons to those children they give and then you blow up some more balloons give them the kids go to the next door okay so this is a great way just to, to really uh kind of uh, fire things up and let those parents know and again and I carry some church brochures at that time. So if someone has a question about the church, you can either give them a website address or you can just hand them uh, a brochure that has some of that information on it. So um, that's kind of what you do during the week and regular stuff. Now, one of the things that we have found, and I want to make sure that you get this in here, is as much as possible, you need to figure out how to do, how to work it in and do a closing program. I would cut out teaching time to do a closing program. I would nix all sorts of things to get a closing program. A closing program, what I mean by that is some, uh, a place where kids are going to maybe, uh, they're going to get an award of some sort. So everybody gets a, you know, some type of certificate. They get a ribbon. They get a, a little lanyard or whatever. The kids will also do some type of presentation. So they will like stand on the stage and quote some Bible verses that they memorized out loud, or they will sing a couple songs out loud, and they will get to have this carnival fun time during this reception that I mentioned. Now, the reason for that is because parents absolutely love to see their children be honored and get awards. Parents absolutely love to see their children doing presentation type of things because that is character building type things and they absolutely love to see their children having fun and if you can engage all three of those aspects on a closing program for like a one hour and it's very easy to get all that uh, into a, a one hour time frame then you will have a huge step forward on getting these moms and dads to return on the Sunday after because they have just now had this tremendous experience. Now, let me say something about children or parents as they come to your church. If you are on a just typical Sunday, no BBS, no whatever, you get a family to come to your church. And if you get a mom and dad, and they are walking up the sidewalk coming to your church for the very first time, and they have children, okay, especially elementary age children, let me tell you exactly what is going through their mind. Exactly. They are thinking, will my children find good role models at this church? Will my children find good friends at this church? They are looking for their children to have wholesome, godly friends. They are looking for their children also to see 
role models that would be, you know, several years older, or even adults, that would be something that their children can look up to because every parent is stuck in the same culture that you and I are in, and they are disgusted with the way this culture is going in some regard, and they are looking for wholesome, godly friendships and wholesome, godly mentoring uh, scenarios. And that's what they're looking for. So what we want to do is make sure that we are presenting that. And when parents come to a closing program and their kids are standing up there having fun with a bunch of other kids saying some verses out loud and their kids are getting an award because they memorized, you know, all five Bible verses that week, they are, you are checking the boxes, okay? You are ringing the bell and those moms and dads are like, this is the place for us, okay? You don't have to track young moms and dads with, you know, fancy gigantic programs. You don't have to track them with, you know, modern hipster type, uh, you know, attitudes and music and all that. You will attract them with godly character and godly friends and letting them know that you are here to help them raise their children and solve problems for them. And so this is a very, very important part. So I want you to get a closing program on your schedule somehow. Uh, you know, work it in. And if it's on the last day, if you're doing a night VBS, they're already coming at night, so you really are way ahead. What you do then is there's a there's a way to do this where if, like, you your, your last lesson is like, oh, we, we got to do the last lesson on Friday, but we got to have a closing program. How are we going to do that? Okay, there's the best way we have found to do that. What you do is you say, moms and dads, we're so glad that you're here, and in a few moments your kids are going to be up here getting some awards. They're going to sing some songs for you, and then we have a, a reception and a little carnival afterwards. It's going to be a great time. But we have been telling a story all week long, and let me summarize just a little bit of that story. And you go through, and on Monday we learned this, and Tuesday, and you summarize that as best you can. And today, okay, because you are here, I would love to tell this story, okay? I'd love to get it in. And it's got to, and, and you can even kind of dabble around the edges of that story a little bit. But you can say this, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend some time giving your children awards today. We're going to spend some time giving your, letting your kids sing and for you and memorize some verses and have a carnival. And we're going to finish our story on Sunday morning. And we want you to come back at 9.30 on Sunday morning for our closing uh, uh, the part of the Vacation Bible School. And our teachers are going to be teaching us in the junior church time during the Sunday morning service. We're going to tell the final portion of this story. So what you're doing is now you've also given your Sunday school workers that curriculum so they know to kind of finish that, and they're kind of wrapping it up. Now, if you get it all wrapped up during that time and you can get it done, you can hit rehash it or redo it in some way on Sunday morning. Uh, you can have, uh, you know, some special, uh, like, epilogue, you know, as they call it, uh, you know, on Sunday morning. But you want to do something very special and invite all those parents right there and the kids Make sure you're here Sunday morning at 9.30 for our service because while we do this junior, this junior church thing, and the way it works here, folks, is we all come in here and sing a couple songs, and then we dismiss our kids to this junior church, and it's just for them, and they're going to love it because they're going to get to hear the story of XYZ, whatever it happens to be. So that's what you do. You, you let parents come and see their kids on the stage, all that, and then you inform them of this follow-up uh, that you're going to be doing. So give them some certificates and awards and things like that. Make sure that you keep your closing program short. Okay, so it is not, you know, we've all been to graduations this time of year and that are go on and on and on, and you want to keep it short. And I'll give you a tip about keeping it short. If you tell the parents, if you tell the parents that you're going to have a closing program, um, what we like to do is I like to say we're going to have a program, it's going to be 55 minutes. Okay, we're just going to do a 55-minute program. Going to be less than an hour. Going to be an awesome thing. And when you say about an hour, you know, they know what that means to a preacher, okay? Uh, you're going to go an hour and 20, okay? You don't want to go one minute. You go one minute over, and you're a skunk. You go one minute short, and you're a hero. So make sure your timing and all that is done. Because the important time is when this program is over and the kids are starting to have so you dismiss them and they start to have some fun doing this little carnival stuff. And now the important time comes because that's the fruit picking time. 
That's when you begin to build those relationships. That's when you as the pastor can get around and build relationships because it's impossible almost during the VBS uh, to do that. That's when your pastor's wife and some of the other relationship people are not running games or doing refreshments. They are dedicated to walking around and meeting every single set of mom and dad and building relationships and starting conversations with them. So make sure that you keep your thing uh, short. One other thing that you can do during your program, in addition to, you know, like I say, them singing and doing a verse, is you can show some type of slideshow summary of what is uh, what, what the VBS was. That's a good thing to do. Or you can make a slideshow summary and say, we have got, here's a few pictures, and but we created an entire summary, and we're going to show that on Sunday morning, and we would love to have you be our guest. Come back on Sunday morning and see the pictures of, of, of the entire program and all the kids that got the awards. We wanted to have these photos in there. So just another great way to do that. Uh, but you can also show a slideshow or a little promo of your upcoming outreach day camp your upcoming you know kids program that you're doing later in the summer and we like to do that and promote them and then say by the way if you'd like to sign your kids up when we have our little carnival time there's gonna be a table over there in the back and it says day camp adventure day camp make sure you get your kids signed up for the adventure day camp okay and go over there and sign them up because it's filling up fast and we want to have them we want to have them in there so show some type of thing uh do the carnival as we said sort of a a fun little thing some simple games some candy uh stuffed animals some toys that you give away like if the kids earn a little we call them rodeo bucks where they you know they memorize they get five and then they get a you know, one for here and one for there. They get a bunch of different uh, uh, rodeo bucks, that kind of stuff. When they get all that, then they can kind of spend those. So they'd have some points somehow to uh, spend and, and uh, use that for the games. And then they can go over and actually uh, buy some things. And we have people bring stuffed animals. We have people that have picked up games. At the, you know, we've done the oriental trading where you get just a bunch of little, you know, the trinket type things that are fun. And the kids love that. They eat that stuff up. So um, though you have your relationship people. already talked about that ready. Make sure you have some nice refreshments. And we like to have, if you'd really like to make an impression, and again, this is the role model thing. Your teenagers many times in a VBS are not necessarily being used. They might be helping in a class. They might be helping with refreshments or, you know, some game time. But one of the things you can do with your teenagers on the Friday night with your closing program is turn them into like servants, like maitre d's. And we have done this. It is so fun. We have, we have cookies on a plate and we have the, you know, the guys dress up and they put a little towel over and they go out. Would you like a cookie? You know, and uh, they just have a good time with that. And they go around and the parents are like, there are teenagers with good attitudes and they are serving people. This is my church. You see what we're doing here? Okay. Now, the last thing that you have on the closing program, and then we'll get to the literature uh, thing here. Uh, The last thing is to uh, uh, make sure I get to the right piece of paper here. Oh, here it is. Um, The last thing is uh, make sure you have some degreeters, okay? And you might go, what's a degreeter? A degreeter is someone at the door that says, See ya. Thanks for coming. Okay. But they would also hand them a brochure on your day camp. They would hand a brochure on your church program. They would hand them a brochure on a parenting seminar that you'd be doing. They might hand a flyer that says, don't miss us next Sunday. You know, how to raise godly kids in an ungodly world. Uh, You know, that type of uh, thing. And you make a little flyer for just that Sunday. And they greet them as they go out the door and say, thank you so much for coming. And we appreciate you trusting us with your children. And we're having a great program on this Sunday, and we would love for you to be back. Here's a flyer. tells all about uh, the program that we're doing. Okay? So the D-greeters do some of that. Now let's jump to literature. And actually that was a, a, a piece of literature right there was something that you hand out, uh, some type of uh, brochures. Um, your uh, m- main flyers, and again, this sort of promo ahead of time, but make sure that your main flyer that you – 
uh, print up and and print up a lot of them and hand out a lot of them. Give everybody ten of them to hand out in their neighborhood. Uh, you know that type of thing. Do some blitzing as we call it and go out and hand uh, different things out. Um, we did a Bible school years ago over in uh, uh, Colorado area, and I remember I told the pastor, I said, I'm gonna send you a bunch of flyers. Uh, how many do you think uh, you'll need? And he rattled off a very small number, and I said, I'm going to send you a lot more than that. So I sent him a 1,000 flyers. I mean, it's a stack of paper about that thick, big old Astro Bright colored flyers. When I got there, he was really proud. He had about 20 kids in his Sunday school, and he gave each of them two, okay? So every kid got two flyers, so he had handed out 40 flyers, so we had 960 left. And I said, you know what we're going to do this afternoon, Sunday afternoon, we're going to go hand out some flyers. And so we went to the neighborhood right beneath the church, handed out flyers all over the place down there. We went in Monday. By the end of the week, we had this massive amount of kids. And he was like, it's a miracle. God brought so many people in, you know. And there's a couple of us that's like, well, a lot of it has to do <laughs> with just getting out there and busting some shoe leather, you know, and making it happen. And so print a lot of flyers and get those flyers out. Make sure that they have a couple different things that you want. Since many of the flyers you'll be handing to children, they don't understand street addresses as well. So you want to have like, you know, 440 Spruce Street or whatever, but you want to also have the church beside Taco Bell, you know, or what you want to put a location, the church across from the high school, the church on the corner of Spruce and Fourth, uh, so that they understand that. So that really helps with children. And then also make sure that you have your Sunday service times on there because we're inviting moms and dads to come back for those Sunday services and they will be seeing that and seeing where that time is. So uh, on the literature thing, make sure that you have that and that your flyer also includes that closing program date and have that real big like that's not just a little tiny thing but that's a big thing special parents program graduation and awards night seven o'clock you know to eight seven to seven fifty five you know at the church service so make sure that you have that make sure you have some type of kids program brochure i mentioned that so that you can do it and then one other printed thing that is really an important one to do is that during the week um, usually on Tuesday and usually on the last day, uh, so it may, might be Wednesday and the last day, kind of sort of depends, but I usually have a couple letters that I send home, and it's a letter from the senior pastor. You know, dear mom and dad, we thank you so much for entrusting your child, and we love you here. We love children here at First Baptist Church, blah, 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 blah. We just want to let you know that we have a wonderful evening planned for you on Friday night at 6 o'clock, and it will be over at 6.55, <laughs> and your kids will be on the stage, and they will get awards, and there will be presentations, and we have a reception afterwards. Please be our guest. But you write a letter, a couple letters along that line. And also, of course, you know, the P.S. By the way, we have a fantastic uh, sermon plan for Sunday morning. It's on how to raise positive kids in a negative world. And we would love for you to be our guest on Sunday morning. So you have those printed ahead of time. You have the kids fold them up, stick them in their pocket. They take them, take them home, and you uh, are going to make a huge difference, okay? This is how we aim. This is the way that we aim at reaching young families. Now, there's many more things, and if you have questions on this, we're going to be talking later uh, and have a chance to uh, go through uh, anything that you have. But every single thing that we talked about, we have done, okay? Every one of these things are things that we have sent out. The emails we have sent out, we've texted people, we've run programs, we've invited them to day camps, we've done photographs. I mean, we've done it all. And we catch fish around here, okay? We like to reach young families, and we want you to reach young families too. So I want to thank you for taking time to listen all the way through this. Go through and listen to it again as much as you need to. Uh, I will see you again on our next session, which is coming up. Uh, I'll give you the info on that. You'll get some of that uh, probably emailed to you. But I appreciate you. And if you are loving children, okay, remember this simple statement that people love people who love kids. Let me say it again. People love people who love kids. If you take time to love on children, you will reach young families. And we're excited to be a part of that. So God bless. This is Mike, and we will see you again real soon.